Why do we have genetic diseases? If natural selection is supposedly removing bad genes, why do these genes still exist? These are very interesting questions, which leads to one of the major reasons why the study of human evolution is important. There are several reasons why we still have genetic diseases and genetic disease risks. One reason why genetic diseases persists relates to the way in which alleles for the disease are expressed. For example, does it require you to have two copies of the allele, one from both parents, for it to affect you? Or is one copy from one parent enough? When an autosomal trait only requires one allele, we refer to it as dominant. If the autosomal trait requires an allele from both parents, we call it recessive. Most major genetic diseases are recessive, which allows there to be many carriers of the disease who are unaffected because they have only one copy. A carrier is typically not under any pressure from natural selection. This is also why too much inbreeding for a population can be a problem. With high inbreeding, there's a greater chance that unfavorable recessive traits will come together, resulting in a less healthy population. If a child is born from parents that are genetically dissimilar, there is much less chance of these recessive diseases will come about and will be observed. Now, allele expression and the effects of inbreeding are very complex and important subjects. There are genetic traits that may or may not be expressed regardless of whether they are in one copy or two. Also, there are times when limited inbreeding can be helpful for a population. I strongly encourage you to take an additional course in biology if you wish to have a deeper understanding of how this works. Another reason why genetic diseases persist is that natural selection does not operate in a simple cut and dry way. Natural selection certainly purifies the genome of traits that would be immediately deadly. Purifying selection is especially relevant if the trait prevents the offspring from ever being born. In fact, up to 20% of known pregnancies end up in a spontaneous natural abortion. Many miscarriages during pregnancy are caused by these natural abortions. The actual number of spontaneous abortions is likely much, much higher, but they go undetected because they don't always result in obvious symptoms. Of course, these miscarriages are terrible moments for families, but it's important and maybe a little reassuring to know that many miscarriages are normal biological accidents, and they do not mean that the families did anything wrong. Most families can have a normal reproductive success, even if they've had a miscarriage in their past. Purifying selection is clearly very strong when the trait has a dramatic effect on the offspring's survival. But often, genetic diseases are less deadly. If the trait still allows some level of reproductive success, then natural selection enters competition with the expression of the trait and the other forces of evolution. Also, if the disease has no major impact on reproduction, such as those diseases that happen in our twilight years, then they would have little impact on natural selection.